the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only one and the only Lord. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, Apostle Paul describes God's great love towards us by saying, But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Kid lifers, everything starts with and for God. He loved us first. He loved us while we were yet sinners and unlovable. As our response, let us offer our lives to Him. Let us love Him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let us praise and adore Him, for nothing can separate us from His great love. Let's sing this song and worship Him together. Tighten your abs some more. The backflip requires core stability. Hey Shinobi, do not feel the flip. To execute it properly, you must commit to the jump. Yes, Sensei. I'll try harder. Okay, 
that's enough warming up. Everyone, gather around. We will be starting our lesson for today. Yes, Sensei. Okay, settle down. Today, we will be moving on to a new weapon. The nunchucks of no conflict. Whoa, I've only ever seen nunchucks in movies. They're so much bigger in person. The nunchucks of no conflict is one of the most difficult weapons to use in our arsenal. It took weeks for Lord G and I to fully bring out the weapon's potential. But once you master this weapon, it is one of the most powerful. Oh! I'm definitely going to master that! For today, we will learn only the basic maneuver to spin and pass both nunchucks from one hand to the other. Who would like to go first? I'll give it a shot. It shouldn't be that difficult, right? Ugh, I can't even understand this weapon. Phew, I know, right? It's like, how are we supposed to spin the nunchucks and then toss them to the other hand at the same time? Yeah, look, you just gotta do it like this and then this. You two really couldn't get that. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, it's not that hard. I don't see why you two find it so difficult. Oh well, excuse us. We're sorry we're just not as good as you two. Now please leave us dumb people alone to figure it out ourselves. What's wrong with them? You two may have learned the actual technique quite quickly, but it seems that you failed to pick up on the meaning behind the weapon. Which is what, exactly? That all four moving parts of the weapon must work together in order to work well as a team. Do you remember the promise we made you swear by when you became Shinobis? Yes, it is a Shinobi's duty to help others, especially those who cannot help themselves. And also that if anybody were to hurt others, that we would step in and use our skills to defend ourselves and them. Exactly. And to do this, you must learn humility and patience. We are not here to flaunt our skills, but to practice them silently and use them only when needed. By being arrogant and showing off, you have accidentally hurt your fellow shinobis with your actions. Not everyone is the same and some people pick up on skills faster than others. What is more important is that we make up for each other's weaknesses and help each other grow past their failures. I see now. I guess we were acting very unshinobi like huh? Yeah, I can't believe that we didn't realize it right away. We've got to make this right and apologize to our friends right now. No, there's no more need. Whoa! Where'd you two come from? We've been hiding nearby for a while now. It's a new stealth technique we just figured out. Whoa, that's amazing. Uh, but anyway, we'd really like to apologize for being such show-offs. We promise to never do that again and to help you learn the nunchucks as well. Deal! And in exchange, we'll teach you two how to pull off the stealth technique we just learned. Yo, yo. Now that is what I like to hear, yo. It's good that you all set aside your differences. We are proud of you all for learning to be humble to each other. And now you know the true lesson that the nunchucks of no conflict teaches. It is a special weapon that requires harmony and balance to proper utilize. That's right. It is a reminder of brotherly love because you need both ends of a nunchuck to use it. You can't work alone or in conflict with your shinobi brothers in Christ. That's just not how our lives as shinobi work. 
God designed us to work together and to love each other in brotherly love. When you are able to do that, then you four will be unstoppable. Do you understand that? Oh dear Shinobi. Yes, yes Sensei. Sensei. <laughs> All right then. It looks like it's time for us to celebrate your training with some yummy yummy lunch. Let's go. I am hungry. Wow, I'm really enjoying our episode this month. How about you, Anna? What do you think? Hmm, I think this episode was significant because it, remind, it reminded me of brotherly love. It's really something I have to learn with my siblings and friends. And do you know that brotherly love is not just with those people? Huh? Really? Who else needs brotherly love? Well, the church, of course. The people we are with in church are your brothers and sisters in Christ. Your friends and kids' life and your teachers are part of brotherhood. Hmm. Well, I really didn't see it that way before. So you're saying I have to love my teachers and friends in church? Yes, ma'am. That's right. And you know that accountability is part of brotherly love because only those who love their brothers and sisters will ensure they keep living the holy life. Whoa! So I'm telling my friends to live a holy life and that's a way of showing my love to them? That is right. Like us, your parents, we try to make sure you obey the rules because it's our way of being accountable to God that you live home. Wow! I learned a lot, Mommy. Then now, let's pray. Okay, so, let's get it. Right. Dear Lord, thank you for the wonderful lesson that we learned today. Please help us to help us all to have brotherly love for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, and in church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brotherly love and accountability. Who knew that these two were interconnected? Well, as the teachers, we should have known, Sensei. But anyway, brotherly love is something that I should know we have just started to learn and should practice. Truly, Lord G. In fact, this reminds me of our passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. Ah, I do see what you mean. God has commanded us, Shinobi, to love each other's brothers and sisters. And because we are accountable to God, we should do it. But it isn't just a boring command. See, loving is something exciting to do. And that is our action point today. Love each other. How is it exciting? What do we do to love each other, Sensei? Well, some of the things we have discussed like accountability and making sure that our brothers live holy is one. I think also just checking up on them and seeing if they're alright on a regular basis is another thing we can do. Yes, Ashinobi, it's important to know how your brothers and sisters in the church are doing and making sure that they feel your love. Some people may feel alone, so be there for them. Others might be discouraged or going through tough times, so pray for them, encourage them, let them know that they are not alone in the battle. So remember to love your brothers and sisters and make them feel it. Our lesson on brotherly love may seem simple, but applying it is the challenge. Remember our dear Shinobi, 
to love your brothers and sisters in Christ always. It is our way of being accountable to them. And by helping them live holy, we love them. We shall see you again in the dojo, dear Shinobi. Do not forget that we shall have our last lesson next week. Hello, kid lifers! Welcome back to the continuation of our study on the Book of Thessalonians. This September, we are learning how to be disciples of our Master. And our Master is God. And as His disciples, we need to learn how to live as He commands. In the past week, we have been taught to live a holy life, being accountable to God and to others, and being careful in our bodies and not to take advantage of others. Today, we continue our study and we learn that God commands us to love more and more. We are expected to love with a brotherly love. Paul teaches us that this is a basic rule for Christian living and living as Christ's disciple. There are three key points that we need to remember in today's lesson. We are told to love, firstly, because God loved us first. Second, God commands us to love and we are to obey. And third, we need to love more and more. In the first verse, the point Paul is making here is that I don't need to write to you about this or to teach you because you already know. It's basic because God taught us how to love. How did God teach us about love and how to love? God taught us how to love by loving us first. Isn't it that the best way to teach is to show by example? How do we know that God loved us first? Through His Word. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 says, We love because God first loved us. And in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 it says, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Continuing on with the second verse, Paul says here that you and I as believers are already loving with brotherly love. What we need to do it more and more. Do you notice the strong word here? It says, we urge you. It's stronger than the word, I encourage you. It's the same as saying, you must. For indeed, we come to the second point of today's lesson. God commands us to love and we are to obey. And lastly, in this last verse, it says, We urge you brothers to do this more and more. How much love should we give? This much? This much? Once a week? Once a day? Once a month? How much love shall we give? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So love with everything we have. Love with no limits, love without end, and without measuring and asking for anything in return. The scripture tells us very practical ways on how we can show brotherly love. And we will study and share this together on Saturday in our online study at 3.30 p.m. or on site at 10 a.m. on Sunday. See you all!